Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're working on this, what is this thing? It's a Troy belt. Who knew? Uh, it's got a Honda GCV 160 on it. Extremely popular engine on push mowers these days. They're a good engine, I like them. Um, I have one of my own personal mower. The 160 is an excellent engine. One of the big features I like, important, is a fuel shut off valve. I really like that on my, on my mower. When I'm done cutting the grass, on my way back to the shed, I shut that valve off, and sometimes it runs out of gas before I get there, but it doesn't matter. I run it empty or run it till it's almost empty, and then I park it in the shed. So it really helps prevent possible problems like the one we're dealing with today. Customer brought this in, he dropped it off and said, uh, it doesn't run right. So I get out there and I did a couple of little prelim things on it. I did a spark check and it, it's got spark, it's fine. You pull the cord 76 dozen times and uh, it'll fire and die. And then you pull it, pull, 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 and it'll fire and die. So, okay. All right, I think we got a carb problem. These are automatic chokes and mine is flawless. My mower sits for a week, pull the cord, turn the gas on, give it 10 seconds, pull the cord, starts first time. First pull, every time. And the choke comes off properly. It works fine, it's a good system when it's working. But before I did any of that, before I even pulled the cord on this machine, I pulled the dipstick out for the oil. And it's about two and a half inches over full. It's way over full and it smells like old gas. We definitely have a carburetor problem. That's why I got my ultrasonic cleaner warming up as we speak. So, it's been a busy day. For you guys, this is the only video I've uploaded today for me. This is my fourth video uh, recording today and I got another one coming up. So before my day is done. We got thunderstorms moving in, and if that happens, I'm gonna have to stop recording because that rain hitting the tin roof of my shop, you'll never hear a thing I'm saying. So let's dive in quick. Let's get this thing uh, turned around for the customer so we can get it back. Okay, while well, I've got my evacuator pumping out that oil, let's see what we got in here. Nice clean air filter. Grab a couple of 10 millimeters, we'll get that cover off of there. Fuel is off. Okay. That's uh, runny black gas in the crankcase. That's not gonna do. Let's get that out of there which was loose, not good sign. Loose is not good. Everything's just falling off now. Should have a crank breather. This should come off of there relatively easily. Back of the air box, there we go. Well, just everything's just falling out now. That's your auto choke. Somebody has definitely been in here. There are no gaskets here, none. There should be a gasket between here and the intake and a gasket between here and the carburetor and there's nothing here. That's your auto choke. Use this little wax pill that expands with heat and then it comes out and turns the choke off, but why is there silicone in it? Huh. Hmm. Strange. Those can give you grief too if they don't come out. Well. Let's get the little fuel line clamp moved back. A wire clamp ring. We've got our governor damper rod off. Let's get our fuel line off. Come on. Come on. You're moving. Reluctant. Come on. 
evacuator still pulling black gas out of the crankcase. Okay, a little more moved. Can you see? There you go. And the fuel valve is not shutting the fuel off properly. It's still running. Huh. That's not good. That's an issue. There we go. Lots of flow. Should be no flow. It's still flowing. Well, the valve is no good. Great. Let's get my hose pincher offers. Get you zoomed out maybe a little bit so you can see better. Punch these pinch fuel line off here. Doesn't have much gas in it, but I did have to put a splash in it to get it to work. To get it to even fire. Hose pinchers are not pinching. Here we go. Okay, well, the fuel valve doesn't work. It's got some old gas in it, that's for sure. Old yellow gas. So this entire mower is covered with a sheen of oil. Somebody's wiped it down with a rag. But uh, it's covered. That comes from the oil being too full and being gasoline in it. It just seeps out of everywhere. Seals and everything. I think this customer just bought this mower. But there should definitely be gaskets there. <laughs> Hard plastic on aluminum housing does not seal properly. I might have a set of gaskets for it. We're going to check. But uh, first things first, let's spin around and get the, on the carburetor side of things. We'll get that taken apart. We get a set in the ultrasonic and go from there. Okay, I know you can hear a buzz going on. That's my air conditioning. It's right in the window. It's a hot, humid day. Let's uh, shut that off for now. Yes, the uh, I'll suffer in the interest of making a good video. <laughs> so we got a bunch of crusty stuff in the bottom of the bowl. Ew. Same crusty stuff has now transpired or transposed itself onto the rest of the innards of the carburetor. So. Floats goopy, needles goopy, jets goopy, everything's goopy. It's a cayenne carburetor. Definitely needs a soak in the ultrasonic later. Let's get some screwdrivers. We need one to pull that pilot out. We need one to pull the jet out. Is this one gonna work? Hard no. Oh, oh look at that, she works. Let's get this out of here. Wow. Just a little hole. It's got to be cleaned out, blown out, run a wire through it. I think this, oh, that smells like old gas. I think this machine sat for quite a while. Yeah, the jet came loose. That's nice. These can. These can give you a fight. Here we go. Jet's full of green slime. And the jet is very restricted. You barely see through it. I don't think we can get those tubes out. I don't think they come out easy. We can try, but I really don't think they come out. Oh, look at that. Came right out. Made a liar out of me. Get out of there. Get a little 90 degree pick maybe to give a little persuasion from the inside. Yep, she's almost out. There we go, she's out. And plugged. All of this. can be pre prevented if you use non-ethanol fuel. 
That's what all this junk is. This is all from ethanol. It's horrible, horrible stuff. It is wreaking havoc on small engines. They're just not designed. The components are just not designed or made out of materials that cope with ethanol fuel very well. Pull out, well, you know what? I'm gonna push wires through this first. At least give it a fighting chance. Oh, there's a booger hanging on the end of it. Well, that's definitely our problem. The fuel valve is not helping either, but once the needle and seat are working properly, it'll, that'll definitely help that. This green mess, it's just green goopy stuff. Even the inside, the big the bore of this thing has got goop in it. Alrighty. Push through all these holes. The old sonic cleaner actually does a very good job in here, but we're still gonna push wire. You can see all the green stuff pushing out. Definitely a mess. Definitely hasn't run in a while. That one's completely plugged. You can't even get the wire in it. Here we go. All right, that's that. There's our jet, main jet. I think I already tried that one. Okay, that's clearish. That and that and that. Push a wire through that little pilot. I don't think I can get those out. I don't remember. It's a piece of brass. I could probably get it out, but I think it's kind of pushed in there. Try a different wire, see if I can get a different one to go through it. Very thin one. I'll have to pay special attention to that when it comes out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Well, it barely kind of starts in there. Well, there we go. Push through. Yeah, it was, it was plugged. All kinds of plugged up goodness in this thing. All right, into the Ultronic it goes, it goes and uh, well, it's having its spa day. I'll carry on getting all the junk out of the crankcase. We'll be back. Okay, so I've got the carb back together. It's nice and clean, spotless. And while I was, uh, while it was doing its ultrasonic cleaning, I went ahead and did a sharpen and balance on the blade because it needed that too. I managed to find some appropriate gaskets us to get this assembled but it's kind of a tricky thing let's get our linkage hooked up first because everything has got to be sandwiched together there's our governor uh, damper spring get that hooked in there okay so that's there now there's a bunch of ga gaskets we got to sandwich together so first things first I can sit right there let's get this gasket in there we get the bolts put through because the bolts are what's gonna have to hold everything together in alignment so there's that and that slides through the carburetor and then there's a gasket between the carburetor and the choke assembly. Another gasket behind the choke assembly. And that'll go to the engine. I'm gonna slip the fuel in on while I can. Yep. A little breather for the air box, yeah. Oh, my gasket fell off the back. And then we'll try and just wiggle everything all in there at the same time. Here we go. Wow. I think that went. That one's treading. And that one's treading. Oh, that's why. <laughs> 
the hole in the engine that this threads into is stripped. That's why it was so loose coming off. Wow. Well, I can't give it back to him like that. Helicoil time, maybe. We'll see if I got a helicoil the right size. Oh, boy. Well, it looks like it's an M6 by one bolt. I do have a helicoil set for it, so. Oh, boy. Let's hope for the best. These threads are crusty. I'm going to blow them out. These ones are missing. There's nothing in there. So the drill size on the kit says quarter inch, so let's give her. What's the worst going to happen? I don't want to go too deep, but there is a lot of metal there. There, got to the point where it just, just touches the cylinder. We're gonna go with it. Let me get my tap wrench here. I don't like doing this customer stuff. <laughs> but it is what it is. That's gotta work. That bolt has to work or else it won't seal. And it won't, it'll have a vacuum leak. So let's get this started as square as possible. So you drill out the hole a larger size, you thread the appropriate tap, it comes with the set. Then you thread your insert in. You guys are seeing this? Yep. So it just snugged up on me. And we'll back her out. We use a blowgun to blow those chips out. Blow gun. Let's try and plug the hole the best we can. Oh, that's a perfect fit. Yup. There we go. We got our insert. So this tool has got a little tang on the end that holds. It'll grip onto the threads of the insert. And this should just thread right in. Uh-huh. So what you say, I'm gonna use my tap wrench. Ratcheting tap wrench is real handy. Get in there. You were in there and then you fell out. There you go. Okay, I gotta get in the way here for a sec. I'm right handed, it's gotta go in this way. Okay, I don't know if you can still see, ish, kind of, somewhat. It started, so now we can use this to thread it in. Yep, and then we just unthread the tool. The helicoil insert stays in. It's a self-cutting thread, so it's going to be a booger to get in there, but we're going to do it one time. I'm not going to mess with it. We'll get everything together and put it back together. Just like that. This way. Okay, Governor Linkage again. Governor Damping Spring, where'd you go?
Where did you go? There you are. Put that back in your home. Yep. That all lines up nice. A few lines can go on now. Okay. Just checking here, determining making sure that where that linkage goes above or below the hose and it goes right there so that's where we're going to put it back to this again gasket bolt other bolt that'll hold our gasket and everything in place through the carburetor oh I shouldn't use those words carburetor those are somebody else's words One gasket, choke assembly, what is going on here? Other gasket, let's get her in. Okay, started. This other one will not likely start very easy. You may need to give her some persuasion. Let me get a driver. Because it's a self-locking bolt. It doesn't have nice round threads on it or smooth threads. Yep, I know my head's in the way. Okay, that one's going in. This one's going in reluctantly, but it's going. Get that little breather tube put on there. Yep. Okay, yep, I know I'm in my way. Like I said, I'm right-handed. She's threading, and it'll be tight. Nice. There, perfect. Huh. Saved. There we go. Phew. That was a good save. <laughs> that would suck. Have to fix, repair, replace that. Okay, that's that. Fuel valve on. Oh, yeah, right. It doesn't matter. Take the hose pincher offers off. Let the carb fill up. And we'll see. We shall see. All right, what do you think, guys? Fuel's on. It's not leaking all over the deck. Oil's uh, plate changed. It's got fresh oil in it. She should fire right up. Oh, new spark plug. Let's see. Oh, she popped. Alright, we got it dialed in. 
This one here, there's no tab to bend. You just loosen these two screws and you can rotate the bracket a little. It pulls a little more tension on the spring, gives your governor a bit of a pull. But, uh, yeah, it runs good. It seems to run pretty good. It is uh, spraying oil. Oh, it was just residual. <laughs> There's a bunch of oil under here. Probably from when it was overfilled with gas and oil and causing a, causing grief. So, anyways, we're going to call this one done. I'll call the customer, tell me to come pick it up. Sharpen and balance the blade. New spark plug. Carb gaskets installed where they should have been and there was none. Helicoil on the cylinder head. I'll let them know about the valve. I can order one for them if you want. So. It's not overly critical. I like it. I like that it's there. I'll let them know. They can make the decision and go from there. So not a bad, not a bad repair. Decent mower. Decent mower. It's uh, basically a red cousin to my blue yard works. It's the same idea. But uh, anyways, relatively simple repairs on this one. Thanks for joining me, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you do subscribe, give that bell a ding a little notify you when I upload new videos. And until the next one, take care.